Uh, hi! Welcome to our first ever episode of Meeple Witch TV. We're here, uh, we're going to be interviewing someone interesting from the community. We will also be cooking up something nice, playing a game, and we'll give you uh, an interesting look at what's going on at the Meeple Witch Cafe. So, uh, I'd like to introduce our guest. This is James Benavides of the Institute of Texan Cultures. Hi, James. Hey, Jason. Good to see you, buddy. Right. And with me, as always, is Dawn. Hello. Howdy, Dawn. So, tell us, James, what Hi. is coming up for the Institute of Texan Cultures in November? November. So, as always, we've got our free second Sunday for the month. And, you know, your ability to pay should never be an issue when accessing and visiting your cultural treasures. That's one of the things that we strongly believe. So, we also have our programming on Second Sunday. We want you to get the most out of the experience. We have two things going on. Inside, we have the American Indians in Texas at the Spanish Colonial Missions offering a program related to, actually, uh, to the tricentennial. It's a similar presentation to what they gave at a teacher's workshop over the summer. Tricentennial being the 300th anniversary of San, of San Antonio's founding. Wonderful. Yes, sir. So, uh, some historians from the American Indians of Texas and Spanish Colonial Missions. I know uh, Art Martinez de Vara, the former mayor of Von Orme, mm. also a uh, an award winning historian, studied under some amazing people, studied my ancestors of all people. Interesting. Um, and Von Orme, the Ruiz Herrera Cemetery. Mm. So, uh, those are some. Uh, historically relevant to Hamas. So a lot of story there. And uh, a couple other scholars are coming in for that particular uh, session. Outside, there was a project going on that the uh, Institute of Texan Culture, well, we're a UTSA component, and we did a collaboration with uh, the Office of P20 Initiatives. P20 Initiatives uh, is kind of like, well, K through 12 is kind of a target now. We Let's broaden that a little bit because people are going to need guidance from preschool 20 and beyond. So this is an educational program. Is this for kids, for teacher training, or for both? This one, this particular one, they call it uh, True Grit, G-R-I-T. That's an acronym for uh, guts, integrity, tenacity. There's uh, some letters in there I didn't quite get all of that, but <laughs> we can this find is a uh, this is a particular uh, program that P20 Initiative started, and you know if those are the qualities you're going to need to be a, uh, a successful student and uh, you know, be a college-going student. Well, guess what? Those same values are what our you know, Texas pioneers needed to set the frontier. It took guts. It took tenacity, and you know so. They had to stick with it over the course of a few weekends. So this is a, a character education as well as uh, uh, history lessons and whatnot. Yes, and this was a great opportunity of learn by doing. And what was so great about it, over the course of a couple of weekends, uh, we had these students from two SAISD schools come out to the Institute, out to the back 40, um, to learn how all those frontier structures work. The one-room schoolhouse, the barn, the log house, the adobe house, uh, the frontier fort. So how was life lived? What tasks, what chores were associated with each? What did the pioneers have to do just to get along, um, you know, to live in these places, in these circumstances? So this uh, free second Sunday for November, the students are going to be the leaders for these oh, activities out there on the back 40. Sort of like docents. Yeah, that's kind of like our old uh, junior docent program. But sure, we did that a uh, number of years back. Uh, we're actually uh, seeing how we might be able to revamp that. So, uh, the, one of the big hands-on projects that those students um, have been on, um, and they will be teaching how to make Adobe brick. Wonderful. And uh, we'll be able to you know, take a mini Adobe brick that's great. So uh, there's a great opportunity there for some hands-on and some takeaway. Totally family-friendly. Bring the kids, absolutely. Sounds great. Good opportunity. There. Now, uh, what were some places in San Antonio where Adobe bricks were used? In some of the missions, perhaps, or 
Now, that's going to be unlikely because San Antonio is just way too humid. Mm. So you need to get out toward West Texas, out uh, towards desert, where you're actually going to get quality adobe brick that is going to dry hard and stay because otherwise you're going to see it start to crumble. That's one of our challenges with the adobe house out there at the Institute. Uh, We've got to keep an eye on it. We have a uh, stucco seal on it. And, um, you, know, you have to keep an eye on these things because over a course of a few years, you're going to have to do some maintenance. So what, um, all of the missions that we have around around this area, we have these fabulous missions, what are they made of? Stone. Just, oh, just cut it's stone. Cut and quarried stone. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a story on that one. I wish I could tell you a little more. That's not exactly my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. I could point you at the right people. <laughs> right. But uh, that's really uh, all I can tell you on that front. Uh, and I'm glad to collaborate with uh, the missions on certain projects. I know Archaeology Month coming up, and our teams usually uh, make it out there to San Jose and some of the others. We've done projects out with uh, Mission Espada, and uh, we've talked with uh, the National Park Service that uh, administrates uh, the parks and the missions mm -hmm. um, to actually do teacher training on the acequias and uh, early farming uh, techniques that would have been used in the mission era. Okay. Now I do have a question about the event that's coming up. You said um, American Indians. Are you speaking of the indigenous peoples of of America, <laughs> of, the, of North America? Yeah, of North America. What yes. what tribes will be represented, or do we know? Typically, from Texas, uh, you're going to see. Uh, well, to the best of my knowledge a lot of representation of the Coahuiltecan nations. Um, you may be familiar with the state of Coahuila in Mexico. Yes. So uh, there's actually a Coahuiltecan nation. Um, they're, I believe, still working on getting their recognition, uh, but very uh, specific to uh, Central and South Texas, uh, particularly around the Rio Grande region. Uh, was the nation of the Pacuatecans, and there are again a number of associated tribes. Uh, we do have a number of typical Texas tribes along the coast was Karankawa, uh, we had Apache and Comanche, and Caddo, and uh, Lipan Apache, mm -hmm. so various nations they called uh, Texas home. Very cool. All right, now we're going to go ahead and wrap up this segment. Let me ask you a question, James. Hey. What is your favorite tabletop game? Oh man, on the tabletop. Now, this uh, stretches back a bit, and it was one, a great one that uh, you and some of your friends introduced me to. And pretty much uh, got me hooked was uh, Warzone Mutant Chronicles Siege of the Citadel. That's a classic. Two player teams running through uh, on this huge. Board Citadel, got your you know, 28 millimeter minis, a bunch of dice rolling and butt kicking. Awesome, awesome. Loved it, man. <laughs> All right, thanks. Now uh, we're going to go ahead, we're going to cut to the kitchen where we're going to start making something that ties into the game we'll actually be playing tonight. We're going to be cooking up a delicious burgoo and we're going to be playing a game based on that dish. Um, hi, James. Hey, Dr. See you. It's good to see you too. I'm so glad that you're over here to help me make um, what we're going to eat tonight. Uh, this, in tying in with the game theme, um, is burgoo. Now, I know that's a weird word. Have you ever heard it before? I have not. Okay, so burgoo, besides being a really fun game, is actually a traditional southern stew, um, which, and I grew up in the south and I never even heard of this, but I think <laughs> this is like deep south because this is a, uh, a clear your fridge kind of experience. Yeah. So you know clear your fridge kind of recipes, right? Oh, of course. Uh, bring out the gumbo or uh, what's going in the paella, what's going in the falafel. Okay, well, you, what usually goes in the burgoo is uh, going to be raccoon, popcorn, squirrel, something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're, we're fresh out of all of those. So tonight what we have going in there is some uh, jalapeno, jalapeno kielbasa and some smoked brisket. So this is going to be a very Texan 
uh, burgoo. Yes. But first, as with any soup, traditional soup, we're going to start with some uh, traditional aromatics. So here we've got our onion, we've got our uh, celery, and we've got our carrots. And I'm going to ask you to help me by uh, chopping up our onion. And um, once you're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and throw that in with some butter so it can start sauteing. Right. So you were mentioning earlier, and this is exactly why I prefer a sauteed onion and grilled onions to a raw onion. Mm -hmm. So much more flavor. So you're starting to uh, reduce the amount of hydration in there. You're starting to bring out uh, the natural sugars, etc. Absolutely, absolutely, because if you put in just a raw onion into a soup, you're going to have those chunks of raw onion. No matter how long it cooks, they're going to be mm -hmm. all big. This is definitely going to caramel, help, uh, caramelize those sugars, develop the flavors, brown food tastes good. So mm -hmm. we want to we get that started. And um, so if you could go ahead, sure and, try, and this is just a leftover onion from uh, mm -hmm. earlier. Root end um, off. Mm -hmm. Outer layer off, Absolutely. and I'm going to town. You were looking for something in the range of about what we put in the pico de gallo? Absolutely, absolutely. It doesn't have to be um, big chunks. It doesn't have to be a fine dice either. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the saute on my Instapot started. So this is gonna start coming up to heat. It'll come up to heat pretty quickly. So once you, once you have the onion ready, it'll be good to go. I'm gonna get some butter in there too. I'm actually, uh, always surprised at how fast the Instapot starts going. I love this thing, it's a workhorse. <laughs> Every kitchen should have one, and that is my uh, Instapot infomercial right there for you. Man, this is a stubborn onion. <laughs> okay, got it. There we go, all right. Mm -hmm. Start right about this there. This beet is gonna be way uh, easier to do. Ah, there we go. Am I not on the... There we go. Yeah, that's what you always want to see on your uh, <laughs> on your mandolin. All that red—it's just gorgeous and viscous. Well, that's one way to get it out of there. Yeah. Right. Ooh, those are gorgeous. Hmm. So now we have some Julia beef put in there, and I think I am going to let you do the guess. All right, are we about done with the onion? Uh, a couple more rounds here, and I got it. All right. Yes. All right, thank you, sir. I will dump this on in. Okay, now on celery, the basics. Are uh, you want to cut right above the bulb? Yeah, cut the white parts off. Um, I've already washed those. Okay. Uh, but the these are good to go in, and and even the root ends and the skins from the onion, you don't have to waste any parts. These can always be saved to go into a stock if you're making a vegetable stock. Because uh -huh, you'll that strain all it. that li strain all that out later. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you want to do the fine dice, then what I what I always do is slice down. Um, the the center of the rib a couple of times. Uh -huh. So you do that by splitting it. You're you're making smaller, um, you know, a smaller yeah. dice. Smaller dice. Okay, and up uh, towards the top, you say leaves can stay on. They're consumables. That's yep, more flavor. Absolutely. All right. So, don't want to cut. At the um, mark. You can, well, right now this is going to give you a good handle. Uh -huh. So just split from here down. Gotcha. And you can do it, uh, you know, two or three times. And um, and then just chop up until you reach that little knuckle, mm. and then from there you can just chop it without having to uh, to cut, to split it again. All right, that makes some sense. The onions are already smelling really good. Mm. Oh goodness gracious! They've got to invent smell -o vision at some point because <laughs> it's ridiculous that we haven't created this technology yet. Oh yeah, this is looking good. All right, I'm gonna grab that. Throw these in here. All right, and now all we're really doing um, is releasing the uh, the aromas and the flavors of, of this, softening the veggies just a little bit. Um, 
There we go. All right. So we're going to let these soften up a little bit. Um, I'm going to throw in the beet. This is going to give great color to this dew. Uh -huh. Beet, I love beet. They are they are earthy and sweet. I can eat them raw. I, I love juice. Here, how do you eat beet? Do you like beet, James? See, I have never had anything other than canned. I was never a fan. Taste that. Much better. Isn't it amazing? It's sweet mm. and crunchy, and it has that earthy beetness. Mm -hmm. I, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. I actually, I crave them. I, I crave them. And it's very different from the stuff that you get in a can. Oh, but gotcha. this would be great as a beef salad. So this is what's going on in here. We've got the beets and the carrots and the onions and the celery. We're softening up the vegetables. And now we're gonna start adding in some of the other, the other things. So James, if you would like to start um, chopping up the meats. Uh -huh. A couple link sausages. Yeah. All right. So we got some link sausages. We've got some and brisket in there. Brisket, yes. Now you got to partake of the brisket the other day when we had our. Um, when uh -huh, we, had the we were party. baiting. That was fantastic. Yes. And it was really well well done. The brisket was excellent. We we all enjoyed it. In fact, it was a, it started out as a ten pound <laughs> brisket, and that's all that's left. So <laughs> I think I think everyone enjoyed it very much. Now, the great thing about putting these sausages and the brisket in is that it's adding a lot, um, even more fat. Um, we have this unfortunate uh, past few decades in our, well, uh, century, <laughs> where suddenly fat was vilified. And it's kind of a, it's, it's a weird thing that especially Americans have gone through is this, um, uh, these food fads where um, a particular food will be, will suddenly be on, on the outs. Um, you know, Dr. Kellogg back in the day said that protein was horrible for you and that you should only be eating whole grains. And that's, that's why we have so many, so many cereals, you know, the Kellogg's company, they, their whole purpose was to, was to say, stop eating protein, but protein like fat and like carbohydrates, they are macronutrients. We only have three macronutrients, and they need to be eaten in balance. Pardon me, I'm just oh, right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the other side of that story, after Mr. Kellogg, <laughs> um, so of course the grains might come into fashion, mm -hmm. but that's going to put bacon and eggs on the outs. Yep. So when those uh, sales started to tank, uh, the farmers start. Well, there was a guy named Edward Bernays, mm -hmm. and Bernays is actually uh, gave birth to modern public relations, which is my profession. Oh. So Bernays actually oh, went. Uh -huh, uh, Bernays actually went and surveyed doctors. What constitutes a complete breakfast? Bacon and eggs. <laughs> What's a good, wholesome, nutritious breakfast? Bacon and eggs. And so he gathered all this information about a whole breakfast and what doctors recommend. And sure enough, it involves bacon. People love bacon. Uh -huh. And it, uh, yeah, sure enough, the information starts to be published. Newspapers pick it up. Uh, magazines start picking it up. And bacon sales start to pick up. Excellent. Awesome. Full circle. There we go. And there you go. All right, so I'm going to add in, because right now we have no um, liquid in here other than what's coming out of the veggies and, um, and from the meat. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in the uh, garbanzo beans. And this is, uh, it's just half a can of garbanzo beans with the liquid. I'm going to throw that in to give a little bit more protein, a little bit more, um, a little bit more liquid to this. We're going to give that a good stir. Let's so we're going to give that a good stir. And this is, this is going to be a very red soup, which is fine by me. Hey, I don't care what it looks like. How's it going to taste? Right? Uh -huh. All right. So then next um, we have, so let's look and see what, what we got in there. Spanish rice. We got Spanish rice. But how much do you think would be good in here? I think three of us are eating on this tonight. Uh, maybe uh, two spoons a piece? Two spoons? Okay. All right, let's 
Or a big heaping spoon. A big it? heaping spoon. There we go. You don't want to do too much rice because that'll soak up a lot of liquid. Yes, that's the catch. But the great thing is, this is this rice, which I made from scratch the other day. And it was good. <laughs> it has it has a lot of good things in it. It's got you know, it's got crushed tomatoes. It's got lots of seasonings. So this is a soup that because I'm using pre-seasoned stuff, I don't have to do a lot of seasoning exactly, for it. Exactly. And with that brisket and the uh, and the sausages, I'm not going to have to add a lot of salt to this. We'll just mm -hmm. salt the taste at the end. Um, this will have a little bit of spice to it because of the uh, jalapeno and the sausage. The jalapeno and the sausage, and also there's there's a bit of spice in there. Oh, wow. So let's see. We've got our beef broth here, which is what was left over from the other day. It still smells good. I mean, I just used it the other day. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and pour this in. It's about half the box, so we're looking at um, about a pint right there. Um, now this is going to, it's not quite soupy enough, so we might want to, especially since this is going to reduce a little bit, and it's got that rice in there. We've thought about adding potatoes. I don't know. At this point, well, because we have one starch in there with the rice and, uh, you know, a carrot's a nice starchy vegetable as well, so we may want to leave it at that. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, I'd say, you know, if you were working on a bigger pot, we had, if we had less to work with, I'd go with it. Yeah. The beautiful thing about something like a burgoo is that it's wonderfully improvisational. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's this actually made in places like Tennessee and Kentucky as a community thing. No kidding. Like part of a fundraiser and everybody who comes donates an ingredient. So you oh, have huh. no idea what you're going to get beforehand, and then they cook it up and sell it by the bowl, and that's how they raise their funds for right. school or church oh, or whatever. Fantastic. Well, and the grit, it's like stone soup. There you go. So, you know, you, you, you get the whole community involved, and, mm -hmm. and you know, so I'm going to add a little well, bit of water. Then. We're going to switch this over from saute to uh, do we want to do soup or do we want to do a meat stew? I think soup, because everything's pretty much pre-cooked in here already. Agreed. So we're going to, oh, all right. Off, soup, and we're going to pop the lid on. And then make sure that it's on. So this is, this is actually in pre pressure cooker mode. So it's going to cook on high pressure for about 30 minutes and then release the steam and then we are going to have some wonderful burgoo. Thank Fantastic. you so much for helping me, Jane. Hey, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciated uh, all of your conversation and uh, and your input and all your chopping skills. So hey, thank you so help. much. Appreciate it, Doc. All right. So, while the burgoo is cooking, we're going to play burgoo from Tasty Minstrel Games. Now this is a micro game that they funded on Kickstarter and it involves the process of secretly stealing ingredients out of the pot while you try to get whatever ingredients you have out in public into the pot. Well, it's you really do. not so secret. It's really not so secret but at you all. You have to announce it at all. It's mm -hmm. true. So you have one assortment of all six colors, uh, orange carrots, red beef, yellow spices, white onions, green celery, and brown potatoes, and you have them in your hand. Uh, you use your hand as currency to take actions. You can either spend an action to throw things from the top or bottom of your batch of ingredients into the burgoo, and you eventually want to get rid of everything that's here in your ingredient batch. You can spend one to split your batch in half, or you cannot spend anything and just take a sample from the burgoo without actually losing anything from your batch. Okay? So, are we ready to start? I'm ready. Let's go ahead. Just... Now, the rules say that whoever cooked a meal for somebody last is going to be the first one to go. So, it's somewhere between Dawn and James. Maybe we can do a rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first. One, two, three. Ah. 
two, three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> so James gets to go first. All right. Split it, potato. All right. Now I'm going to throw in, I will also be throwing in a potato from my hand into the pot to split it at the potato in my, in my batch. And I'm going to split my batch as well by throwing in the carrots and splitting at the carrots. Ta-da. And I am playing peppers from the top. Okay. I'll be throwing in meat, and I declare top, so I get to throw in two meats from my stash, from my batch. I'm going to throw in onions from the top. Now I have onions on top of my batch, so I get to throw those in too. And I am going to send potato. Throw in carrots from the top. I'm going to sample onions. All right. Potatoes from the top. Two from the top. Okay. I am going to sample a potato. And I'm going to throw in spices from the top. Ooh. Dang. Okay. Onion from the bottom. Okay, I'll throw in celery from the top. I'm going to sample carrots. Celery from the bottom. Hmm. I'm going to also sample a carrot. Throw in carrots from the bottom. Okay. And I will throw in. Oh, but you're done. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, let's go with. Okay. So I will throw in a potato and declare it from the bottom. And I'm going to sample carrots. Onion from the top. Here we go. I declare spices from the bottom. Ooh. All right. Ooh. All right, that's a quick little game. Yes. So you're clear. I am clear. Now, I can't win because I still have batches, right? Yes. Same here. So, uh, we played a practice game before we got the cameras rolling because we were a little confused by the rules. Dawn won that one because just like in this situation, she, uh, she was the first one to clear out her batch. Uh, in the event where two people clear out their batch at the same time, you would go by however many, <coughs> however many ingredients are still in hand. And uh, Dawn, if she had cleared out her batch, would beat me because she has way more stuff in her hand than I do. Uh, so, uh, what are some impressions we had about this game? How about James? I spent the time only looking at my own stack. That's my problem. I should have been looking at you guys. Mm, so you got to keep an eye on the other. So players. there's your strategy. That's where your strategy comes in. Uh, yes. What yeah. about you, Don? Definitely, the, my my strategy the first time around was to see what everyone had at the top and the bottom, and to uh, and to try to eliminate accordingly. Um, this time, I actually made a. a a tactical error in that I discarded when I should have uh, not discarded, and um, and it led to everybody. Everybody had something at the top, and I I had just uh, I wasn't paying attention when I made that move. Now, something I noticed: if somebody has a double ingredient either at the top or at the bottom, 
and they sample that ingredient from the from the stew, you know what they're going to do on the next turn. I, I did that. I saw James do that once. Actually, I think I might have done that more than once during the practice game. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. This is a nice. It, it's a nice little casual game. Mm -hmm. Requires a degree of tactical thinking, and it's very very short. Mm -hmm. The other thing that would add to uh, the playing on this one, you know, it, uh, you probably want to draw or arrange blind for fairness, mm -hmm. because it could be so utterly simple uh, to arrange. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Call a split and just start knocking them off two at a time. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And none of us did that. So. <laughs> I just kind of did it random. I wasn't even thinking about that anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's, if that's something that uh, folks playing this game might want to make as an additional rule, you know, a house rule. Mm -hmm. But because um, it's not something that's covered in the... Uh, and the rules. Now, speaking of the rules, this is very interesting. We didn't even notice this until we started uh, playing the game tonight. It actually comes with a, where is it? Yeah. It comes with a recipe for how you can actually make a burgoo. Now, the ingredients list does not look at all like our burgoo, uh, no. but, you know, it's basically a fridge clearing kind of dish. So whatever you mm -hmm. got sitting in the fridge, as long as it passes the sniff test, should do nicely. Right. Yeah. This one. Now, this does does. Uh, it, it calls for cornstarch. So clearly, they're 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 looking for a thick, like a um, you know, like a stew kind of a kind of a, yeah, a feel there. In there. Mm -hmm. Now, with the rice that we've got going in there, it's probably going to be pretty thick, mm -hmm. and it smells really good. So we can probably start digging into that really soon. Oh, that's yes. fantastic. Okay, so we have the burgoo ready. Uh, let's go ahead, let's dig in, and uh, everybody go ahead. We can give our impressions as as we sample our experiment for the evening. Well, it smells really good. Mm -hmm. the, the spices in the sausage and the rice definitely taste those. They sneak up on you. The back of your palate. <laughs> now that's something that might be different in your burgoo because you might not put spicy things in it. So this is, you know, it's going to be different every time. Right, I started with, uh, again, I'll make a sausage. So, uh, yeah, I definitely uh, got a lot of that particular flavor and again, the jalapeno in it. So if we go a different direction, it looks like a bit of brisket, some onion or beets, and uh, carrots. So let's see how the flavor is not going to be different the next way. Now, my experience cooking with beets, anytime I use beets, the whole thing turns this deep blood red. Mm -hmm. And I notice here we have this kind of uh, nice looking orange color. Mm -hmm. So the beets did not overpower and this particular recipe didn't overpower everything else. But the beets themselves have completely lost all color. I was curious about that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, not familiar with them, except I don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, all right, they render down and the color is going to bleed out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I did not know that. Now, Don, you were remarking when we uh, took the lid off the Instapot that this was not as thick as you expected. Yeah, the, the rice is almost completely cooked down, but it did not, um, it didn't make a, uh, you know, 
a thick broth like I was expecting. This is this is more of a thin soup broth. And maybe we could have we, we could have maybe done with some more um, with some more rice. We could have either done more rice or we probably could have done the potatoes. Yeah, the potatoes could have could have gone in. Um, because there's actually more broth now than there was when we started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So overall Burgu, the food, would try again, would experiment again. What do you guys think? Oh, definitely. Try again? Yeah. Yeah. I would do it. I would go for it. This is, this is actually something that I've grown up always doing. It's just that, you know, I just didn't know, that, didn't know that's what it was called. All right. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead. We're going to continue our delicious meal. All you there out there in internet land, thank you for joining us on our first ever episode of Meeple Witch TV. We had James Benavides as our special guest. Appreciate the invite, amigos. Oh, no thank you for coming. And uh, be sure to check out what's going on at the Institute of Texture Cultures on the free second Saturday, was it? Sunday. Second, second Sunday. Sunday is in November. Awesome. Thank you very much, and you have a good evening. All the best, folks.